Good morning, Wildcats. This is Ms. V. We're here today for some art. Today we're going to be talking about an artist named Romero Brito. Romero Brito is a Brazilian artist. He is a painter, a serigrapher, and a sculptor. He combines elements of cubism, like the artist Pablo Picasso. He combines pop art, like the artist Andy Warhol. And he is inspired by graffiti painting all throughout his work. He uses vibrant, bright colors and bold patterns as a visual expression of hope, dreams, and happiness. Here are some examples of Romero Brito's artwork. Can you tell that this is a puppy? Does this look like a real-life puppy or a cartoon? It does look like a cartoon. Why do you think that is? Could it be the different patterns that he uses to color his puppy? Could it be the bright colors that are used? Would you ever see a puppy in real life that has blue polka dots on its fur. For these flowers, notice how he draws the flowers and he breaks them apart into different sections. Each section has a different kind of pattern. Can you tell that he uses combinations of warm colors, like the pink and the red section, or the orange stripes with the red stripes? And then his background colors are cool colors, like the light blue and dark blue stripes, or the green and the green polka dots. Can you tell all the different patterns that he uses? We have stripes. We have polka dots, which seem to be his favorite. We also have a lot of little tic-tac marks and some squiggles in this specific one. For the next couple of slides, we're going to see different works of his. Okay, so we're going to start with our Romero Brito cat. If you need to pause the video at any point, go ahead. I went ahead and I did a pre-sketch. I know some of us in class have started this already. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start it from the beginning um, because some of you may not have finished or were absent, so I'll start from the beginning. So the very first thing we're going to do is going to be our cat's face. So we're going to start the line here. And we're going to immediately start off with our ears. That kind of looks like a cat. But 
using cubism and what we know about it, we're gonna go down a little further and it's going to extend to where the eyes are gonna be. And we're gonna finish off with a very pointy triangular chin. From here, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to start with the almond shape of the eye. So we're gonna go from here and we're gonna start the line that goes down, meet it there, and we're gonna bring it up here and do that. The other end of the eye will be this corner from the face. And do the same thing to the other side. We're gonna start here and bring a line down and then we're gonna do the top line. From here, we need the actual um, colored part of our eye. So we're gonna draw a line here and the little circle for the pupil. And because our cat is looking this way, we're gonna start with the, the rounded line there and the little circle for the pupil there. I know it looks a little freaky, but we're going to add more to it and once we start coloring it, you'll see it a little better. We're gonna do the little upside down triangle for the nose, followed by the little backwards J and forward J for the traditional cat mouth. From here, we're gonna start with the legs, the front paw. So we're gonna do a long U here for paw number one. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna do the second paw. This one is gonna go all the way up to there. From here, we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the main part of the body. So it's gonna be almost like a half circle. So we're gonna start it here and we're gonna bring it all the way around to this end. And from here, we're gonna draw the line connecting it. We're gonna separate this body into sections. We're gonna start here and we're gonna bring a line that curves down and ends here. So we're gonna go here and bring a line that curves here. We will be separating this section into two and we're just gonna separate it here. And we're gonna add one more separation from here onto that area. And we have our abstract cat. From here, we're gonna separate the, the background into four sections. So we're gonna do our first break here. We're gonna do a break here. We're gonna do a vertical break here and we're gonna finish off this section and we might want to finish it here. We're gonna go there. We can go ahead and pause here until we all catch up. Then we're gonna find a pink crayon and we are going to color in our eyeballs. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the next one.
We're going to take a yellow. This jumbo crayon. We're going to take the yellow and we're going to fill in the cat's face. with the yellow. From here, we're going to take a red and we're going to color in the paws. And we're going to do the same for the other paw. Can anyone tell me whether the colors we've been using so far are considered warm or cool colors? If you said they're warm colors, you are correct. Yellow, pink, and red are considered warm colors. Another color that is also considered a warm color is orange. In this case, we're gonna use this tertiary color called yellow orange and we're gonna color in this section here. Following along to the style of art that Romero Brito uses, we're gonna be adding a lot of patterns to and color themes to our cat. After we color this section yellow-orange, or orange if you don't have the yellow-orange, we're gonna take a red crayon, a red crayon, and we are gonna do horizontal stripes. Horizontal stripes are lines that just go across. So we're gonna be layering our color to create our pattern. If your lines are not completely straight, that is okay. It is okay to be unique in your lines because it's abstract. We're going to go ahead and fill this other section yellow. So we're going to take the yellow and we're going to fill in this area. This area, the layered colored, we're going to take a red orange and with the red orange, we're going to do dots and we're going to pattern in our red orange dots. I'm gonna go ahead and find a pink and we're going to fill in this area. This is not a good pink. It's a very dry pink. Oh, found my other one. We're gonna take our time coloring
And the color we're going to use to layer some vertical stripes is going to be red. Vertical stripes go up and down. We're going to finish our cat by coloring this area orange. I found an orange that is broken, so I'm just going to peel it a little bit. Because my crayon is broken, but it still works. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to color in this area. Notice how our cat has been colored using combinations of contrasting colors. So we use a color that is lighter than the other. and it makes our patterns stand out. And they're all considered warm colors. So in this orange section, we're gonna take a red and we're going to be doing some red polka dots. Same way we did them here, but now in the orange. So we're gonna do that and fill our section with polka dots. We can go try to make them the same size all throughout. Don't make them really little. Don't do like little ones. Make a circle and then fill it in. Make a circle and then fill it in. Add some on this side. And that is our cat. But in um, Romero Brito's cat, he also takes care of the background. That's one of the things that makes his art so unique is that every section is divided into multiple sections. Um, so we had like the big body of the cat and then we divided into different sections and we filled each section with different patterns. We're gonna do the same thing with each one of our background squares. So the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna take a light green and we're gonna fill in this corner section as best as we can. Take that light green. Having filled in that light green, I'm going to take a dark green and I am going to do polka dots. One of the things that I have noticed from um, Romero Brito's artwork is that he uses a lot of stripes and a lot of polka dots going in different directions and creating different patterns in all of his artwork. For our next section, we're going to do this bottom section and we are going to make it blue. Now here I'm going to take a, a blue green because it's one of my favorite blues and I'm going to use that 
to fill this section. Notice how I'm coloring going in the same direction. I'm not going in every direction. Try to get into the habit of coloring in a single direction. There will be times where we can do it in every which way. But for this project, we need to try to go in the same direction. Then I'm going to take a dark blue, in this case because I use blue-green and I colored it lightly. I'm going to use just a regular blue and I'm going to make vertical lines. Vertical lines are lines that go up and down. The easiest way to get a line to go straight as best as we can without a ruler is to put down your crayon, your marker, your pencil, and then without picking it up again, just going straight. Because sometimes I see some of you guys start feathering, which is when you guys just keep going over the line. And sometimes we just don't go in a straight line. So I want you to get into the habit of putting your crayon down and just drawing the line down. Crayon down, line down. Down, straight down. Put it down and commit. And just keep going. When you get around the feet, your lines are gonna get a little smaller and then they will pick up again on the other side. Now we have another section down and two more to go. We're gonna start on this corner section here. And that one, we're gonna start off with the darker green. And we're gonna color it all going in the same direction. that are below it. Hold on to that edge of your paper. From there, I'm gonna take this dark blue and I'm gonna make diagonal stripes. So here, you can turn your paper this way if you like, or you can turn your paper this way, and you can go and draw thick diagonal lines. Almost like a present. When I draw my present, my, my wrapping paper on presents, I usually do thick diagonal lines. And our last section is going to be blue. So I will stick with this dark blue and I am going to color in this area. Have 
have you noticed a specific color pattern that we've been using, color theme for the background? Have we been using warm colors or have we been using cool colors for the boxes on the outside? What do you guys think? If you said we've been using cool colors, you're right. What kind of cool colors have we been using? We've been using blues. We've been using green, the different kinds of greens. And we can also use purple for cool colors. So for this section, we're going to do little sprinkles. So we're just going to draw little lines going in every direction like sprinkles. Not big ones, just little ones like Tic Tacs. just like that. And there you have it, our Romero Brito inspired cat. When you are done with yours, go ahead and take a picture of it and you could add it to your Google Classroom stream or you can email it to me at vromero at singalschool.com or you can put it in your art folder and you can bring it to class next week. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you for next class. Bye-bye guys.